All right, hello everyone. Welcome back. It's been a minute. Um, this is what's been taking up most of my time for the better part of a year, maybe even two years. So um, this is a very large shop. It is a, I think, 34 by 50 foot shop. It's a pretty good sized shop to work in. And we've been working on it pretty relentlessly trying to get it done. So um, like I said, it's taking up a lot of my time. Anyways, so starting out here at the beginning, a lot of the recording that I tried to do for this thing either got corrupted or I ran out of space on the SD card, so it got cut short. Anyway, I kind of had to skip forward to this point here. This is pretty much the only usable footage that I have of the shop is what you're going to see in this video, so I do apologize in advance. Um, but basically what we're doing right here is we're standing up these trusses. Um, there's actually... A very limited amount of videos on YouTube about standing trusses and setting them the process that we're using here so as you can see my dad is up there on a walk board and that is set we have a board nailed on the wall on the opposite end and then scaffolding set up in the middle and he's using that to kind of nail off the bottom and uh, you'll see it coming in a little while um, there is one of uh, one of my friends is out here helping us, Connor, and he's on a scissor lift. What you see Connor doing on the scissor lift is he's actually raising up on each side of the wall and setting the end on the wall. Now, for now, what we're doing is we're just running a screw into each side on the wall to keep anything from moving back and forth and shifting. But um, you'll see later in the video, I actually do take some of that loose, slide it down, and fix it. Our process for getting the trusses up on top of the shop is we're actually using the a boom lift that we rented and Connor's coming down off the scissor lift and running over and chaining me up uh, chaining the truss to the boom lift and then I'm lifting them up and dragging them across the roof and then I'm helping stand them up and then my dad nails a board between them and that's setting them from falling and what we have on the very end of the shop that you can't see is coming from the wall straight up there is a 2x6 and that's holding the gable end the very end of the shop and keeping everything from falling towards us or away from us so that's kind of the how we did it um, I'm not sure if there's a better procedure out there but this was the one that we chose to use and it seemed to be working pretty good um, we were able to get all these trusses set in a matter of I think a few hours um, we did have some trouble with one of the lifts we rented. The It didn't actually want to rotate in the air or on the ground. It got to where it wouldn't rotate at all. So um, we kind of had to call it quits and then order a lift another time. And I believe this is the second time that we had rented a lift. I'm not totally sure. But yeah. We were able to get all the trusses set with it. And we were actually able to do some of the sheathing. Which I don't have very good. I don't have very much film of unfortunately. But, um, yeah. Alright, so, getting these trusses stood up was a pretty important milestone for the shop. Um, at this point in time, it had just kind of been waiting on concrete. And then getting those walls up took a while because of how bad the concrete ended up turning out. Which was our fault. But, you know, you kind of have to deal with it once it's poured unless you want to spend a whole bunch of money. But, anyway... Job's done. Um, the shop looks good, and uh, the next video that you see will actually be working at the shop. So, um, yeah, I'm gonna let the, I guess myself, take over from here. All right. So, what we're doing is uh, these trusses. We gotta nail all these off, and I went ahead and took this down because I got shot pretty much to where this lift is sitting. But uh, that may have been a bad idea because that side is not shut off yet. It's only this side. But, um, yeah, these braces, the brace is coming this way from my understanding. I could be wrong. And if I am, well, you know, we'll deal with that then. But my understanding is that once I get the trusses shot off, I no longer need the bracing coming from the top plate to the concrete because the trusses keep the walls from falling over. So now on the end, I haven't sheathed it yet. 
because I need to do a lot of wind bracing. As you can see, there's no lath boards, nothing. I've started it down here, but um, I'm out of two by fours and yeah, I haven't went and picked any up yet, so I gotta do that, but anyway, so we're gonna get on with getting the rest of these trusses nailed off and set, and uh, it's pretty much all we're gonna do for today. Sun's going down, so I'm gonna try to hurry up with it. So I uh, picked up this cordless nail gun. It's my walking nail gun, and um, I like it. It's heavy, though. Definitely trained your, trained your arm a little bit. Oops. I need to do that thing. Boy, fake. Turn this bad puppy on. I usually put six nails in each truss, which is probably a lot more than it needs, but I wanted to move, so. So, since I don't have I'll let them up here. So, since I don't have very much time to record, um, I'm gonna get all these trusses nailed off, and then hopefully the next time you see me, I'm either sheathing or shooting up some lath boards. But uh, yeah, the camera may stop recording during this time, but I'm gonna time lapse till it happens. So. All right, so we are inside of what is what we're calling the shop. It is a 50 by 30 building. Um, and we plan on having some car lifts in here and doing a lot of future projects in here. Anyway, if you can see, it's pretty far along. We have sheathed walls, um, the roof has started. But uh, this project has been going on for at least the last two years. This started out as a bunch of growth. Uh, we cleared it with some equipment that was rented at the time. Um, and we started, we poured a retainer wall, built up some dirt, and finally got a slab poured, got walls up. It's, it took a while because we were also trying to work at the same time. All right, so we started out here, the very beginning, we, we poured a footer which wasn't wide enough, and we laid a block wall. We, and anyway, like I said, this thing was a very on and off project. We were trying to work jobs and all that time, so we come back to work on it again, and the wall has leaned this way toward, towards me. It leaned this way. So we had to come up with a solution. Well, the simplest solution was to dig out behind it and we to dig out behind it we put it between that tree and pushed it back we ended up wedging a pulling it back with an excavator that we rented and then wedging a board between here and the block wall to support it and we formed and poured these walls because laying them was going to be an entire hassle so we got snap ties and formed this out of plywood and poured it there's quite a large footing under here you can see part of it 
right there. It is pretty wide. We made sure we had plenty of concrete in there. And we did another one there, another one there. We did three total. We also, because at the time, we, uh, we had not poured that foundation yet. We had not poured that yet. So we, we already had concrete ordered that we're gonna pour it out anyway. So behind this is another retainer wall poured up to probably this height because that's how it worked out. We didn't have gravel, trucks were here, and we had extra concrete, we filled it up. Anyway, so then we wanted to do this little sidewalk here because we wanna have an air compressor out here and some other outdoor things. Now I know this is quite a large step, I will explain that in a moment. Anyway, so we poured the sidewalk and it's not given. This has probably been here probably more than a year and there's been no cracking, nothing has given anymore, and it's holding back dirt to about this point, at least, on the inside. This is gonna be the, the outside. It, it, it may be dirt about there, but anyway. So we did that. We also poured that little wall down there at the same time we formed it and poured it up. As you can see, we had some issues with it where it pushed out at the bottom. We had issues with it because we're not concrete people. So I know that you're seeing some ugliness right now. This was our mistakes. It hasn't cracked. It hasn't given. It's, it's more than strong enough. It was just a mistake on our end whenever we've set the forms. So we set the forms. We set forms here. We had them kicked. This end didn't give, which is what I was worried about. But this right here did not have enough support to the ground right here. So what ended up happening is this ended up pushing out. Now it didn't blow out all the way. So what I did is I shoved some rocks down there to stop the concrete from pouring all over the ground, which you can see it did right there. As that settled, we were gonna try to push it in more, but when we tried to push it in more, it felt like it was just gonna blow out and just create a mess. So we stopped messing with it. We let it set up and we may decide to kind of beat this off. But I mean, I know it's an eyesore, but uh, it's ours. We're gonna have a fence here. It's really only gonna be us seeing it. So I'll pick y'all up whenever the roof is on and it's sheathed. And y'all will probably see me install these big doors. Um, install those two little doors. I don't know, yeah. So this is our exit door to the sidewalk. I didn't tell y'all that, I figured. So this thing has a total of five doors if you include the two little ones. That's gonna be the main entrance. This is the main, this is gonna be the main door. Right now we use this one. Um, these two are so that we have more than one access point. We didn't want to only have one way in and out of the shop, just in case for any particular reason there was a vehicle sitting here or something sitting here that needed to move and there was something blocking that door, we would have to move every single thing, try to get the thing out of here. Now we have more than one way to get this out of here. Also, if we bring a truck and trailer in, we can bring a trailer in here and go right out that way instead of having to try to turn around. Um, but that's a, we don't even know if we're gonna use this shop for that feature, but that's one of the perks of having it built this way. Um, yeah, so I think that's pretty much it. This is the shop. Um, I'm happy, happier than I could ever be that we're even doing it, that it's even a possibility for us, because I know several years ago there was no way I would even dream about having something like this. Okay, that's gonna be it for this video. I do hope y'all enjoyed it. I'll see y'all in the next one.